Hey, what's up you lot, Path here, and today, I'm gonna to be real with you, I've been intending to make this video for about a week, but as you can probably tell from my voice, the cold and the flu hit me really hard. I've been in bed for the past few days, uh, sort of just recovering, but I am on the up now, and as, as you can probably tell, that's why I've got this, uh, this whole thing going on as well. But I am on the med now, I'm feeling a lot better, so let's make this video. Now, normally, before I make a video, I sit down and type out at least some of the stuff that I want to talk about in a video. I sort of script it, whereas in this case, it's just me sitting here and splurging and hoping that editing path will be able to deal with it and turn it into some sort of cohesive video. On the plus side, I've got some new lights in the background, so let me know if you like them. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Now the reason I said I want to make this video about a week ago is because somebody on my previous video, a person called John Paulitsky, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that even close to correctly, uh, said, why not spin up and spin right? That would make things clearer, but physicists would have to agree on this. Essentially, what I was talking about in that previous video, if you haven't seen it already, go check it out. I'll uh, leave a card up here if I remember to do that. I was talking about how spins of an electron, spin is a property that electrons have, can be represented as vectors in some abstract vector space. Now, if that all makes no sense to you, then I'm not going to explain it here again. So, like I said, make sure you've seen that video before you've seen this one. But the idea was that electrons have a property called spin. And when we measure the spin of an electron, whatever that means, we don't need to know that for now, we can find it in one of two possible states. One of them is called spin up, and the other is called spin down. However, I explained in my previous video that spin up and spin down, as well as other quantum mechanical states that a system can take when we make a measurement on it, can be represented as vectors that are perpendicular to each other. So in that video, I said that we could represent spin up as being a vector in some random abstract space, pointing in the upward direction, and spin down could be a vector that was orthogonal or at right angles to this vector, which means it would have to either point right or left, or in and out of the screen, doesn't matter which, but you know, those two are a bit too complicated, we'll just stick with pointing to the right for now. And this is where things got a little bit hairy. We said that these states are called spin up and spin down yet we're representing them with an arrow pointing upward and an arrow pointing to the right. And I explained that this is actually just a random abstract vector space and quantum mechanical states, the state that a system can be in when we make a measurement on it, behave kind of like vectors. That was the whole point of that previous video. And I did mention in that video that spin up and spin down are just names for our quantum mechanical states, namely the state of an electron when we measure its spin. I also said that if it was too confusing to call it spin up and spin down and imagine them as vectors pointing up and right for some reason, then we could just call them something else. I said we could call them vector A and vector B if I remember correctly, or spin state A, spin state B. And John suggested, why not just call it spin up and spin right? And I knew somebody was going to say this. It's actually a really clever suggestion. So well done, John, for pointing that out. Um, I'm going to tell you why we can't do that, unfortunately. In fact, we can call them whatever we want, the two spin states, as long as they are opposite directions of each other. We could call it spin right and spin left if we wanted to, or spin in and spin out if we wanted to, or up and down, just to make life easier for ourselves. And here's the reason why. In order to understand what I'm talking about, we're going to have to kind of, sort of, talk about spin. And I've avoided doing that in past videos, at least the past five or four or five videos I've made on this channel. I have sort of talked about spin and skirted around the subject, and I'm not going to properly talk about it in this video either. I promise I've got a proper detailed video about spin in the works at some point, coming hopefully soon, but don't take my word for it. And I'm going to talk about spin properly in that, but in this video, the whole point is to talk about John's suggestion as to why don't we call the two spin states of an electron spin up and spin right. So in order to understand what's going on here, we need to understand what spin actually is. Spin is an inherent property of some of these particles, electrons, photons have spin. It's kind of like mass and charge and, you know, other fundamental properties that you may or may not be able to think of. Spin is something that comes about when we think about quantum mechanics in conjunction with special relativity, Einstein's special relativity. Spin is actually angular momentum that, say, an electron has without actually rotating or spinning. Now, as you may have already guessed, angular momentum is not like linear momentum. We know that linear momentum is the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity when it's moving in a straight line. Angular momentum is kind of like that, but related to rotation or spinning or turning, that kind of momentum. And as it turns out, particles that have spin already have angular momentum without doing any spinning or rotating or, you know, turning around, like orbiting any other object or anything like that. They just 
have it. And it sort of comes about because of special relativity. So yeah, spin is angular momentum that say an electron has without actually doing any spinning. How weird. So here's the thing, any angular momentum that an electron gains by, for example, orbiting some object is extra angular momentum on top of the spin angular momentum that it already had. Now, what scientists realize is that if particles such as electrons have spin, which is an inherent angular momentum, then we could treat spin just like we normally treat angular momentum. Now, let's just imagine some generic object has angular momentum. We're not talking about spin anymore. Let's just imagine we've got like a tennis ball here and it's spinning about its axis. This means that it's got an angular momentum and if we're looking down on it, let's say this rotating crop, crockwise? Clock talking a lot of crook. Um, so let's say we've got this rotating tennis ball, this tennis ball rotating about its own axis, and actually looking at it top down is probably not the best way to do it. Let's look at it side on. So the side nearest to us is rotating left, and the side furthest away from us is rotating right. Now an easy way to deal with angular momentum is to represent this whole rotation by a single arrow. Specifically, we could choose the convention that this type of rotation is represented by an arrow through the center of the circle representing the rotation, and that arrow in this case is pointing upward. We could choose it to point downward, it doesn't really matter, but let's just say for, for our sake that it's pointing upward. And a rotation in the opposite sense, a rotation in the opposite direction, is represented by an arrow through the center of the circle pointing downward. This way, when we draw diagrams and do mathematics related to angular momentum, we just have to draw an arrow whenever we're talking about some spinning object. We don't have to draw the entire circle and the direction in which the, the object is spinning, essentially. It's just a way to make life easier. Now you might be seeing where I'm going with this. The idea is that our electron, coming back to our electron and our quantum state now, has spin and we measure this spin in a particular direction. So let's say we have our spin measuring object. Let's make this very abstract. We don't need to worry about how we measure spin. We can measure the spin of an electron in say, the upward pointing direction. And the results of this experiment can only be one of two results. Either the electron has an angular momentum that behaves as if the electron was spinning this way, or it behaves as if it was spinning the opposite way. In other words, the two possible vectors that we can use to represent the spins of our electron, assuming you know the angular momentum came about because the electron was actually rotating, are vectors that point up and down. So let's reiterate, let me just be very, very clear about this. When we measure the spin of an electron, we measure it in a particular direction. And the results that we can get can be represented by a vector either pointing up or pointing down. Now, let's be very careful here. The vectors that are representing the spins here are in real space. They're not in the abstract space that I was talking about in the previous video, where we said quantum states can be represented by vectors. Those are completely different vectors. But anyway, let's say we've got our electron and it has some spin angular momentum. That spin angular momentum comes about due to relativistic effects, so the electron is not actually spinning. However, at the end of the day, it is still angular momentum, so we can treat it like we would an object were actually spinning. And that makes life easier for us because then we can see that the angular momentum that the electron has could either be pointing up or down in a simplified vector representation of a spinning object. And that is why electron spins are called spin up and spin down. I hope that makes at least a shred of sense. I guess I'll find out when I edit the video. But if anything didn't make sense or if I got anything wrong, let me know in the comments down below. And if you've got any questions, let me know as well. Like I said, this is not one of my usual scripted videos. I just sort of sat down and had a chat with you guys, which I haven't done in a long time, by the way. And I feel like it was overdue. So thank you so much for sitting through my babbling. And let me know if there's any topics that you really, really want me to talk about. Like I've already said, I've got a few relativistic themed videos planned as well as sort of thermodynamics. And the big one is to finish off my Maxwell's equation series because I've already done two videos. A lot of people have only seen one, but if you have haven't seen the second one, here it is, but I really want to make videos for the other two as well, so keep an eye out for those. Additionally, if you've only recently joined me on this channel, then I have to say thank you so much for subscribing and thank you so much for all your support. I always struggle, you'll notice, to say the words thank you so much for subscribing. 2019 is nearly over, tell me what your plans are for 2020, I want to do some more of this stuff, I'm really enjoying making YouTube videos at the moment and stepping up the quality of my videos bit by bit. I'm not very good at this, but I am practicing and I'm getting better. One of the things I've done is have lights in the background. Am I a proper YouTuber yet? I always say that I'm going to post more vlogs on Instagram on IGTV, but I haven't done that in a while, so that's going to be one of my priorities over the next few weeks. Especially because I want to talk about 2019 and how it's been for me. I kind of want to reflect on the past 12 months or so, see how much progress I've made with YouTube, with music, with badminton, with work, and you know, everything I get up to in life. So. 
I'm going to be doing that soon as well. Okay, enough of the rambling. I think I've said everything I need to, but if I haven't and I've missed anything important, I will leave it down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye-bye-bye.